Hello everyone and welcome back to Animation Pilgrimage, a show where Tanil and I take a look at every single theatrically released animated film in chronological order. We're still here in the year of 1981 and we have Swan Lake brought to us from Toei of Japan with cooperation with Soy's Molt Films of Soviet Union. Mm-hmm. And, I don't know, this is fine. Yeah, um, so, okay, so Swan Lake is something that is, of course, pretty much everybody knows about it, like, has heard of it, but I actually know very little about it. Turns out after watching this, I'm like, oh, okay, so it really is just, like, the Swan Princess, which just makes me feel both... Like, I should recognize Swan Lake before I recognize the Swan Princess, but here we are. For anyone who's not aware, the Swan Princess was a, a 90s film. A 90s animated film, which is just an adaptation of Swan Lake. Yeah. But you know what's funny? Hmm. Uh, the version that I know best... Is the Barbie one? Is the Barbie version. Yeah. yeah which is a direct to... VHS or DVD release, uh -huh. so we won't be covering it. Mm -hmm. But that's the version that sticks in my head more than any other version of Swan Lake. So how does that one compare to what we saw? I wish I could tell you, but it's mostly gone. Oh, okay, okay. Like, the, all the Barbie movies that I have watched growing up mm -hmm. are mostly just, like, snippets here and there, and, like, Bibble is front and foremost. Bibble. Bibble is a side character from the Fairytopia movies. There's like two or three of them. It's a blue puffball with pink hair and it just mumbles. Like All that. Right. It's You've terrible. lost me. <laughs> yeah. It, it's hard to forget Bibble when it gets into your mind. Okay. Anyways, we're talking about Swan Lake. Uh-huh. Uh... -huh. uh Again, it's fine. How about we go into a plot synopsis so people who don't know what goes on in Swan Lake can know what's going on in Swan Lake. Yeah. So there's a girl named Odette. She is a princess of a kingdom that no longer exists, and she has been turned into a swan by an evil wizard named Rothbart, who destroyed her kingdom and now has captured her and wants her to marry him, but will not force himself upon her even though he has captured her and killed all of her friends and family in her entire kingdom. So like... You really gotta wonder where this guy draws the morality in the sand. Yeah, yeah, like, it's like killing hundreds of people, uh, kidnapping a girl and forcing her to stay in this one room, and during the day she is transformed into a swan. Uh-huh. But forcing her to marry him. Or just now, forcing just... himself upon her. No, of course not. He right. would never do that. Yeah, like that's... That's crossing the line. <laughs> it does. Okay. It's like, sure. all right, fine. I guess everybody's got to draw their line somewhere. So Odette is a swan during the day. And mm -hmm. one time she's out on the lake. The local prince named Siegfried sees her. And he's like, hmm... That's Pretty swan. swan. I want. He, he says something like, "Looking at that swan is like looking at a beautiful woman." I'm just like, uh huh. Uh, sure, buddy. Keep telling yourself. <laughs> I mean, he's right, but still. I want to bonk that swan. <laughs> so he follows the swan back to the evil castle, of Mr. Rothbart, and sees her transform back into a human where we get all that exposition I just gave you. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you know what? I love you. You should come to my uh, castle tomorrow night because I'm going to have a big old party. And there I have to choose the bride because I am about to become king. Mm -hmm. And I, wanted to be, I want my queen to be you. So you should be there and I'll say my undying fealty of love to you, which, which is will... what will cure you of your It'll the, break the curse. The curse. Yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll break the curse. So you should do that. And Odette's like, I don't know, man. I, like, Rothbard's pretty, pretty bad. Uh -huh. Like, So Rothbard's daughter, who I don't know if she's like a regular character in Swan Lake or just... She is. She, she is? Yeah. Oh, okay. So Rothbard's daughter... You know the Black Swan? Sure. I know that's a movie that exists. Okay, the Black Swan is about the fact that 
you know, you have the the pretty ballet dancer who is like the white swan, mm-hmm. Odette. And then there's like the black swan, who is her copy, but okay. evil. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Rothbard. I actually have not seen the movie, but like, I know the movie is about like more of a metaphorical thing other than that. So please don't jump down my throat. I'm just trying to explain the concept of the black swan to Whitney. <laughs> Anyways, Rothbart has a daughter. Her name is Odell. Mm-hmm. And she's like overheard this entire conversation. So they lock Odette up and they go to the ball and Odell pretends to be Odette and then Odette is freed by the extra toey animal friend characters, which is a pair of squirrels this time around. We have not talked about the squirrels enough, considering this is basically a movie about them. It's squirrels like, reacting to Swan Lake. Yeah, like, that's this the is movie. called Swan Lake, but it's really about two squirrels watching Swan Lake. YouTuber squirrels react to Swan Lake. <laughs> That's what the movie is, though. It is. They just constantly watching things unfold. I would be curious to see how much screen time the squirrels take up compared to our protagonists. I'm not counting that. But you don't need to count it, but I wouldn't be shocked if they have just as much, if not more, screen time than yeah. our protagonists. Like, it's honestly pretty close. Anyways, they free Odette, and Odette runs to the ball, but she doesn't get there in time for the prince to swear his undying love to Adele, because he's an idiot. Mm -hmm. And so Rothbart wins, and he takes the passed out princess, and he rubs it in the prince's face, and the prince is like, oh, well, obviously what I said doesn't really apply. I still want Odette. Right. So he chases after them as they go back to their castle. And now we get the classic Toei fight in the castle for 20 minutes. Oh, it's actually only like 5 to 10. Yeah. Wow, that's neat. That's an it improvement. It is the classic Toei fight in a castle, run up the stairs. Run up and down the stairs, and by the end, the castle explodes. Mm-hmm. It's very Toei, but that's fine. There is a moment where Siegfried the Prince is like... Uh, at the sword, sword point, point and he's of like, Rothbart, and he's like, Odette, you know, don't agree to his demands. And she's like, no, I have to do it to save you. And he's like, I won't allow this. So he literally grabs, grabs the, the sword, sword out of Rothbart's hands, and he has it, like, in his hands. He could just twist it around and slash up the wizard, but no. He, he stabs <laughs> he himself. He picks it up, and he just stabs himself. He would rather die than have... Odette Mary Rothbart, Uh which is an act of true undying love, which makes Rothbart and his daughter explode into flames and the castle falls to pieces. Yep. And then you get to see the sword stabbing a heart of flowers and Odette's like, aw. And then Siegfried walks over the hill and they're fine. Yeah, he's fine. He doesn't actually kill himself. And then the movie ends happily ever after. Uh Uh-huh. So, um, there's actually a lot of music from Swan Lake Mm -hmm. uh, by Tchaikovsky. The music is... In the movie. And overall, from what I could see, this is a fairly faithful adaptation of Swan Lake. I believe it. One thing I will say about the music, though, is that it's not integrated into the movie super well. It's just kind of there most of the time. It's there, and surprisingly, what I really don't get about this is animation has such a... It's so much easier to animate to music. Mm -hmm. Like... Animation and music go hand in hand. Like the the really the 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 way you can get animation to flow with music t- is almost like music in and of itself to me, and like that's kind of cheesy poetic to say, but because in real life you need to like like you're limited by the movement of a human being. Right, exactly. So animation can really do anything to music. Uh, and I think that's why, you know, so many people on YouTube make, like, animation memes and stuff like that. And why 
so many animated properties are musicals and everything because animation just lends to music so well. And this just really doesn't take advantage of that at all. No, it's It feels just like there. the music was put on as an afterthought. I mean, you can tell because it just stops suddenly in the middle of a song many times. Yeah, and that's another thing too, is I really, really don't like how music will just be cut off they, in the middle of a scene. And they they don't even bother. Like, I know that this probably is not the length of the ballad. It's probably much, or the ballet, it's probably much shorter. But, but they like, they could the have music. done, like, some transitions into mm -hmm. songs. Like, this could have mostly just been the music. And I think that would have played off much better. At least it would have given it a lot more artistic, like, credibility. Mm-hmm. Instead, they literally just have all of the music from Swan Lake and they just cut it off when they don't need the music anymore. And then they start up the next song when the next scene starts. Well, and it kind of feels like when the music is there, they want to showcase that it's like, hey, we're using the music. So the characters will just kind of stop doing stuff so the music can play for 30 seconds and then it'll cut off. I can only think of like one time where they actually integrate the music and it's a throwaway scene of some swans being hatching out of their eggs and doing a little dance. Yeah, yeah. Like and that, that was song just is such a tangent too. Oh like yeah. If you weren't like obviously this film wants you to be familiar with Swan Lake, but if you weren't familiar with Swan Lake, you're like, well, that was random. Also and in, unnecessary. Yeah. Also in the middle. Because it's Japan, they threw in their own, like, pop love ballad in the middle. Yeah, of That course. has nothing to... It, like, it has to do with the story of Swan Lake, but it does not use Swan Lake music. Right, yeah. It's just one random song that's here mm -hmm. because that's what these movies do. And again, I really want to emphasize that even though the story synopsis, we did not mention the squirrels all that much, this movie is about these squirrels. Like, these squirrels are the first things we see. I think they're one of the last things we see. Mm -hmm. It's really about these two squirrels agreeing to marry each other because their whole plot line is that it's a girl and a boy squirrel and the boy is like oh when will you be my wife and she's like ha ha stop being a creep then eventually it gets to the point where the girl squirrel is like if you don't help me solve this problem that odette has then i'll never marry you it's so <laughs> and so then like that's what they do this wasn't bad like, this wasn't a bad movie, but it is. it does make some bizarre choices that could have very easily been fixed. It was perfectly fine and felt very toey to me. Yeah. I. It's like, if you're going to watch this, you won't die. It's not <laughs> you bad. You won't die. But there's no, like, importance to this movie, it feels like. Well, all of its shortcomings come from the fact that it feels too... It feels too constrained to be a toy animation film that it won't take the artistic liberties it needs to be a good film. Yeah. And that, that really sums it up for me. So, of course, this film was based on the ballet of the same name, which came out in 1877, which overall, I guess, the story of Swan Lake comes... I always thought it was just straight up based on a fairy tale. Like, you know... The Little Mermaid or whatever. But it's actually kind of questionable, like, what fairy tale exactly Swan Lake is based off of. Some people guess it's kind of based off of the fairy tale The White Goo or The White Duck, and some say the what was the other one? The Stolen Veil. But it differs quite a bit from both of those fairy tales, which I find interesting because that kind of explains a lot to me about the story structure of this fairy, this quote unquote fairy tale. And I know this is kind of a tangent, but like the story of Swan Lake as I know it, it doesn't feel like a fairy tale. It feels like something trying to be a fairy tale that was made much later. 
Which sounds like it was. Which sounds like it was. So, like, that just kind of pieced it together in my brain. It's like, you know, if if someone said that, like, Snow White, Disney Snow White was the only version of Snow White, you know, and there weren't any other fairy tales before it. Like, like you know how storytelling, like, evolves over the years and stuff and changes? Like, mm-hmm. like that's kind of how it feels is, like, this fairy tale that was made up to be like something else but with the storytelling flares of that time sure yeah like i mean i get i get what you mean yeah uh this was directed by kimio uh, yabuki who also directed puss in boots and 12 months a couple other toy films uh this did receive two separate english dubs The second one was made in the 90s and was released. It when I saw that it was released in the 90s, I was like, okay, so was it released to be like a try to capitalize on Swan Princess? But no, actually. Even earlier in the 90s, before Swan Princess came out, it was done and then it was re-released on the Disney Channel. In 1994, which is the same year Swan Princess came out, but it was released, like, January, and Swan Princess didn't come out until, like, November. So, probably fairly unrelated, just a coincidence. Okay. And then this was distributed in the U.S. by the Samuel Goldwyn Company, who is... Going to be actually distributing quite a few different animated films here in the 80s, but they don't really make any animated films themselves. They so just dub stuff from other countries? They distribute it. Yeah. So that's really it. I figured I'd add that on because there really wasn't any other information. Now, I know that you, before we started this review, you're like, so I gotta know, did Soy's Molten Film make a version of this previously. Yeah, like, why are they on here? Why are they listed as co-creators? What did they do? I don't know. For starters, I do know that it doesn't look like they made a version of Swan Lake. The only connection I can make as to why, in particular, Soy's Molten Film was a co like a co-producer on this project is because it's Swan Lake. Which was Russian. <laughs> like the ballet itself and Tchaikovsky is Russian. So, I don't know. That's the only real connection I have there. Okay. Because, yeah, it doesn't really feel like they have an- had anything to add to this. Unless they did something like the background animation. that, Like the in-betweens. Because, I will say, the art direction in this movie is almost identical to... 12 months. 12 months, which Mm -hmm. is the last crossover movie that these two companies did. And it looks great. Like, it it looks fine. It it looks... It it looks good for the time period it came out. Like, yeah. I I just don't know what exactly they're contributing to these. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, in 12 months it was at least a little bit more obvious because they did the original story. But here did nothing here. I just don't know. And I tried looking up information on them, but like their Wikipedia page doesn't even mention this collaboration. So yeah, I don't know if anyone does know like more of the details of who exactly did what and like how they helped each other do this. I'd love to know. Mm hmm. Well, either way, mm-hmm. I think that's where we're going to have to leave this one. Watch it if you want. No reason to watch it, though. <laughs> Honestly, I, I don't know. I'd probably skip it. I, well, I wouldn't fine. recommend this one, but it was okay. Yeah. Oh, another thing I wanted to bring up, though, right uh, before we end off, is we did make all these comparisons to, or, or we have talked about Swan Princess. I do wonder slightly if Swan Princess took a bit of visual cues from this version of the movie. Cause there are just like some character designs and some color palettes and stuff like that. that are very similar. And 
again, I couldn't find anything confirming or denying that. I was like, well, maybe they're just borrowing from the same like source material, but I couldn't find any sources leading to that either. So I don't know. I'm just curious. You keep mentioning Swan Princess and I, I gotta a ask the audience, who even the hell knows what this movie is? Oh, lots of people know about Swan Princess. It had like 10 sequels. Sorry, what? Yeah. <laughs> One came out like last year. What? Yeah. I've seen this movie once and I don't remember it. It, it was like, it is by no means a huge hit. In fact, it was a big box office failure when it came out, but I think it did really well in just like the home video market. So, and if you're a 90s kid, most 90s kids are going to recognize it. Okay. All right. Well, either way, join us back here next time uh -huh. as we stay with Toy. But this time with a little more adulty movie, as in Ooh. like teenager. Okay. Because we are watching The Door Into Summer. Oh. I think it's some sort of uh, girly anime. Is that shoujo or is that shonen? I think it's shoujo. Shoujo. God, I'm so bad at remembering these two terms. But they're I don't so know. similar. I know. Anyway, we've been rambling. So, next Dating time. anime. Let's go. Yeah. Next time, Door into Summer.